The Lord be with you. And so welcome to St. Paul's Church here in Kildavan. Uh, my first time to worship, not my first time to visit, but looking forward to when everybody can get together again. But meanwhile, uh, we are here, Martha and myself. Martha will be reading from the Old Testament and from the Gospel. And in the meantime, we will bear in mind in the readings from Genesis 15, where Abraham and Sarah are reminded that God's ways are not always our ways. And likewise, in Mark chapter 8, uh, Peter, who felt he knew what Jesus should do, was reminded that, again, God's ways are not always our ways. And in our psalm, Psalm 22, we are urged to stand in awe of him. So let us do that as we worship. This service follows the, the blue 2019 edition of the Book of Common Prayer, which is designed specifically for use on a Sunday. Uh, it's very similar to the green Book of Common Prayer we, we have generally here in church. And so we begin on page 101. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, all praise to his name. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image. And in these last days, you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us kneel, sit or stand as we confess our sins to God our Father. O God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you, we have broken your commandments, we have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine in our hearts. We now have our first reading. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abraham fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abraham, but your name shall be Abraham. 
for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thank be to God. The appointed psalm this Sunday is Psalm 22, beginning at verse 23. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. O seed of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, O seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the suffering of the poor, neither has he hidden his face from them. But when they cried to him, he heard them. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those that fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their hearts shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship, or those who go down to the dust kneel before him? He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. This shall be told of the Lord for generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn, declaring that he The Lord has done it. Amen. We now have our second reading. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are sitting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words In this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I wonder, have you ever been embarrassed by somebody you love in public? Well, I wonder, how does it feel? Can you remember at the time? I know some children have a way of leaving their parents um, red-faced, particularly at a young age. Um, There was one account I heard of a four-year-old not too happy on Christmas morning at the prospect of not being left to play with the toys, but told he had to have his breakfast before he went to church. So it was a bit of a rush. 
and didn't quite get to finish the breakfast. So it was quite late. Um, uh, and anyway, parents and child made it for uh, church on Christmas morning, just about. But in the middle of the service, I suppose by way of getting his revenge, this young fellow decided to announce very loudly, Ma'am, I'm so hungry, I could eat the baby Jesus. Uh, so that was not a happy Christmas at that moment. But in our gospel reading, we heard of Peter being um, quite embarrassed, I suppose, also, in the sense that he was the star pupil in the disciples. If you read back from that passage that Martha read from Mark, uh, we see Peter getting the answer right when Jesus asks, who do people say that I am? And others are saying Elijah and all sorts of other uh, ideas come to mind. But Peter comes out very straight and says, you are the Messiah. And so gets full marks um, and feels, I presume, quite confident uh, when he's then discussing with Jesus um, uh, matters after that. And then Jesus says that he's going to have to go to Jerusalem and be killed so that after three days he can rise again from the dead. A prospect that is horrific to think of given the horrors of crucifixion and torture and the inhumane um, way in which the Romans ruled at that time. So it must have come as something of a shock to Peter to not just be told he has it wrong, but to be rebuked by Jesus in such a forceful way that he accuses Peter of being Satan. So just imagine how that must have felt for Peter. Peter, as Jesus' best friend, thought he was protecting Jesus thought that he was saving him from a horrific ordeal by pledging that he would protect Jesus. Even if it meant taking up arms, he would protect Jesus, the Messiah. So the outrage of Jesus' reply, in fact, suggests that Peter was voicing a temptation that may have crossed Jesus' mind. Perhaps I don't have to go through this ordeal. Perhaps there is another way. Perhaps, as he said to his father in the Garden of Gethsemane, there is a way this cup can be taken from me. And when Peter voices that temptation, it sparks in Jesus a very strong reaction that not my will be done, but your will, Father, be done. And so you can almost feel the pain for Jesus and for Peter uh, that they had to recognize that even our friends sometimes, out of love, ask us to maybe not do something uh, just to try and make it easy for us. And that is a message that comes very strongly uh, from our gospel today and indeed from our Old Testament reading where Abraham again feels that he's been reasonable and that perhaps God is the one who's been unreasonable by saying that in his old age he will become the father of many nations. So for Jesus, Peter's way was not God's way. And likewise for us, there are times when God's ways are not perhaps what our friends might want or what we might want for ourselves even. And that is the reason, and this is the nub of the issue, that is the reason why we pray. Because when we pray, we pray that we might see things as God sees them. All too often, uh, people who are new to prayer have an idea that it's something like a shopping list things that we are asking 
God for, trying to bend God's will uh, to, to see it our way. And in a way, it's the other way around. Uh, prayer is about trying to align ourselves to think as God is thinking, to see the bigger picture, to see the long-term benefit, to see the hope and love that might not seem like um, a, a happy time just at the time we're in, but which God is in control of and has a purpose behind it. So praying is asking God to align our wills to his will. And that's the way really that our prayers are answered because then we, we, we are praying that prayer that we pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done. And if we are part of that will, then that is our will being done. So I'll just finish with a prayer. It's a morning prayer which was written in Russian. It's a Russian Orthodox prayer. But about, well, over 10 years ago, 2010, I heard uh, Archbishop of Canterbury at the time, Rowan Williams, praying this on songs of praise, which I know is a big part of our lives as we can't go to church these days. Um, and it's a prayer which goes, starts with, Grant me, O Lord, to greet the coming day in peace. Help me in all things to rely upon your holy will. In every hour of the day, reveal your will to me. Teach me to pray. Pray thou thyself in me, so that your will may be my will, and your ways become my ways. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have a hymn, hymn 226, which is being played by Mr. Sam Jacob in St. Mary's in Bonclody. And the hymn, which if you have a hymn book, you can follow or hopefully the words will be on the screen, is the hymn 226. It is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to me, that God's own Son should come from heaven and die to save a child like me.
We continue with our collect for the second Sunday in Lent and the Lenten collect. Holy Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask you to hear the prayers we offer in faith. For the peace that comes from God alone, for the unity of all peoples, that by our lives we might do God's will on earth as it is done in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Michael, our Bishop, for each one of us called to serve Christ by our lives and for the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the world's peoples, that those who can would live more simply. And for our government and the health service executive, that we will overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community around Bunclody, Clonigal, Kildavan and Kilrush, for family and friends, that we might stay in touch by phoning one another and staying safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and suffering, for all in hospitals and nursing homes and for all in any need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dying, for those who mourn, especially remembering dear friends in our own community, grieving privately, and for others who are critically ill, for those who care for them, for those who love them. May they know they are in our prayers. And we pray for the faithful who have gone ahead of us, whom we entrust to the Lord in hope as we look forward to the day when we share the fullness of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to you, O Lord. For yours is the majesty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of god almighty father son and holy spirit be with you and remain with you and with those you hold in your heart this day and forevermore amen let us go in peace to love and serve the lord in the name of christ amen <laughs>